You've been described as New Zealand's most notorious car thief. Yes, that would be right back in the 90s, late 80s and early 90s I was. Yeah. So what was going on in your life that you got into crime? Well, we go right back to the uh, early 70s. Uh, my mother and father wanted to save for their own home. And the only way for them to do that was for my mum to go back to work. And there was nowhere for me to go and stay. So they stuck me at the place where there was a pedophile and um, some horrible things happened to me. Wow. Okay, that's huge. And so that started you on a path. What happened next? Certainly did. Um, I started to mix with the wrong crowd. I had an anger problem. Uh, my parents didn't believe what I was saying. Uh, you know, at the age of three, you don't know the difference between right and wrong. As you get a bit older, uh, you start to figure it all out and you tell them what goes on. And uh, So you were, you were telling your parents that you were being abused at this house? Yes. And they didn't believe you? That's right. Mm -hmm. Totally correct. Yeah. And, uh, of course, one thing leads to another and uh, you mix with the wrong crowds and you start getting yourself into trouble. Yeah. And so um, what, what happened? What, what age were you when things started to go, go wrong, go into crime? Uh, well, I think when I was seven was probably the first thing. I uh, burnt the library down at school. <laughs> I know that's not funny, but it sounds funny. Yeah, no, it wasn't funny because I had marks on my backside for quite some time. Wow. Uh, my teachers used to stand me up in front of the class and uh, make me read. And I read from the right to the left, not the left to the right, like normal people. Yeah. It's okay if you're reading a Quran, but yeah. it wasn't. And so, so you were reading back to front and people were making fun of you? Yes, this is totally correct. And that's why you burnt the library down? Yes. yes. I thought if I could get rid of the books, oh. I wouldn't be able to read. didn't have to read. Oh. But instead, we moved area. And, and so how old are you when you started getting into, into crime? You know, you were actually getting in trouble with the law. Uh, we shifted from Mangri. I grew up in Mangri. We shifted from there to Manurewa. And uh, once again, I started mixing with the wrong crowds and uh, we started just petty crimes, silly stuff. And uh, then when I was walking home from karate one evening, I got picked on by a few kids and I had a set of nunchuckers in my bag. I pulled them out and I hit a couple of the guys. And three days later, the police turned up on my doorstep at home. Mm. And of course, I owned up to it. And uh, when I was 16, I got sentenced to three months of corrective training. Right. And uh, I met up with a um, gentleman there who was a car thief. I went in for an assault and uh, I gave him my phone number and everything and he looked me up when I got out. Wow. So I actually came out a lot more experienced in crime than when you went in. I certainly did. Yeah. I was very, um, he taught me everything, wow. told me all about it. And, uh, you know, once you're in that life, it's pretty hard to get out of. Yeah, I'd say. And how many cars did you steal? Oh, well over 200. Wow. And then when you got sentenced, the, the judge actually, what, what did the judge say to you? Yes, he says if you, if, you, if you were able to stick all your negative energies into positive, you'd actually be a genius. Wow. Because isn't it true that you have quite a high IQ? Yes, it is. I've got an IQ of 163. And what, it, actually, what is the normal range? I'm not sure. The IQ, it, it, most people's IQ is about 120. Yeah. President Obama has got an IQ of 160. Right. So. And how old were you when you went to prison? I was 16 when I first went to prison, and it wasn't a nice place. As a young youth, you walk into these concrete walls, and you look around and you think, my gosh, what have I got myself into? Yeah. But you soon harden up to it. Yeah, so it w would fundamentally affect you? Yeah, it certainly did. It does. When you get out, it takes a while to readjust to the, to the outside world. And how long were you in prison for? Uh, the first one was in for three months. The last one I got sentenced to four years, ten months, and done three years of it. Wow. That was for the cars. And just from an emotional point of view, you know, how did it affect you inside? It made me emotionally hard. Hard. Uh, they say real people cry. I didn't know how to cry. Mm -hmm. Not until my wife got sick. Yeah. Uh, she got breast cancer and uh, I cried for three days solid. Yeah. After that. And, and what happened to her? What happened to her? She's still with us. Great thing. Thankfully. Um, she's my rock. Yeah. And uh, we've got three lovely kids. Not one of them's ever been in trouble. Yeah. And uh, not. Uh, it wasn't only until it wasn't until four years ago that they really. I took them along to one of my speeches, and uh, they found out all about me. Wow! And they they were blown away. Mm -hmm. That's yep. that's fantastic. You've actually affected the course of generations to come. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. That's what I want to do.
But you really turned your life around, and you know that's one of the reasons that your story is so inspirational. So tell us a bit about the turning point. Uh, the turning point in my life was I actually got educated. The jail system actually done something for me. I was able to get taught the right way to read and write. I left there with school cert and a diploma in business management, so I didn't waste my time. Wow. And helped change my attitude. Yeah. And then how did you get from there to, to actually being a motivational speaker, getting on the stage? Well, yeah. That was a bit, I was actually managing a, uh, a computer shop, and a, I was standing at the counter one morning, and this gentleman fell off his push bike in the door. <laughs> and, of course, I was laughing. I thought it was funny, but I went over and helped him up. And this gentleman, I did not realise, owned a, run a speaker's bureau. One, one evening, his uh, computer uh, stopped functioning and he rang me up. So he came around home at about 10.30 and he seen some boxing trophies I had and uh, started asking me about my um, past. I started telling him exactly what had happened to me as a kid. And before I knew it, a couple of weeks later, he had me standing up in front of 400 teachers and principals at Henderson School. Wow, so you literally went from, from not speaking at all to standing on a stage in front of 400 people. Yes, I did. Not only that, when I did my talk, at the end of it, a woman come up, a teacher come up to me at the end of it, and um, she was crying. She stuck her arms around me. She removed me from the school I burnt, the primary, the uh, library down at school. Oh, how gorgeous. How mm. gorgeous. And tell me, what are you working on right now? Yeah, what I do at the moment is I do a lot of um, work with a couple of organisations, ones Duffy Books and Homes. Uh, we get out and uh, I'm a role model for them. I go out and talk to the kids, stand up on stage, tell them it's cool to read and cool to achieve, uh, which is great. We get them up on stage, make them do stuff that they reckon they can't do. They use that word can't. The word is can people. You yeah. can do whatever you want to do when you want to do. And I notice on your shirt, tell us what it says on your shirt right there. Yes, it says success comes in cans, not in canots. Mm, I love that. Yes. This is, this is my logo, that's like my Bible, and uh, I live my life by it. And, and tell us, what are your goals now going forward? Well, by, the, by 2020, I would have liked to have spoken to 80% of New Zealand schools, make the kids believe in themselves. I don't believe that children should go through what I did as a child, so I want to make them believe in themselves, believe that they can read, believe that they can write, and they can succeed. Yeah. I actually have. A jacket here for you. Thank with you. With my logo on it. Oh, what a I'd like to present that to you. What a fabulous present. Thank you. Which one are we looking at? Oh, that's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. I think everybody should be wearing that motto every day. Definitely. Definitely. Well, listen, Mark, thank you so much for coming in and inspiring us here in the studio. And we wish you every success with your work with youth. Thank you for having me. Thank you.